So what we're talking about here is we have a good God. What shall we say? Well, what shall we say, brother? Well, men, well, they'll have a lot of things to say, but... <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. They, they'll, say, they'll have things to say that puts control in their hands and makes themselves as God. But see, we're talking about God here. We're talking about God's, the work that God is doing. First, let us think about what God is doing. The Spirit's not going to allow us to forget what he's doing. So what, what shall we say then? What shall we say? It's God's righteousness. It's God's, his justifying. It's God who had his son to be sin, the propitiation for sin. It's God who made it possible that through faith in the blood, we are clean. In the blood of Christ. And that we are made acceptable before him. This is what God is doing. Do you believe it? Amen. We see God is not a hard taskmaster. He is a good God. His goodness draws us away from the world and sin to himself. Faith is in God, not in the things of this world. See, people, men, they put their trust in all kinds of things. They put their trust in a, a group that they associate themselves with, a group that they have been accepted into. See, men, they get puffed up with that. They, we're going to give you a ring and a necklace and all kinds of things, if, and you're going to go in a robe, and we're going to accept you into our group. See, men, they put their trust in this. They put their trust in men. And what men think about them. Mm -hmm. This is not faith. Faith follows after God and believes God. Mm -hmm. The Spirit proclaims whom God hath sent forth, God hath sent forth to be the propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Romans 3.25. So there's it's a key here because we talked about this. Brother Levine brought it up about, well, how do you, why do you think that you're so special? Well, we, see, we don't think we're so special. We put our faith in the blood. See, men put their faith in men. Procedures and, and organizations and associations. And, but no, we put our faith in the blood. Amen. And what God has done in Christ Jesus. Our faith is in no, none other, no other organization. But see, what saves you? you know, well, I just, because of works, because of who you're associated with. What saves you? Without Jesus, we have nothing. Yeah. God is just in remitting sin. If you believe in God, you cannot fail because he has made a way. It's not that we're hoping he's going to work this out. Yeah. He's worked it out. Amen. Amen. God will not destroy you who believe in him, who believe in what he has done, what he is doing. You can rejoice and have joy that God is pleased Amen. with you because of Jesus. See, this isn't something, we're not just like, man, I just, I really hope it works out. Hope I'm in the right line. There's only one line to get to glory, and that's behind Christ. This does not move one to pride or boasting. It will not make room for sin. Those who sin are not believing. All that is not of faith will continue with sin. Well, we, they don't have, you don't have to make up, make up excuses about this. Let's just say it the way it is. You're sinning and you're not living for God because of unbelief. We are moved to believe God just as Abraham did. We see and understand 
that it's by faith we are justified. Not by the law. Amen. And now faith at the same time, it does not void out the law, but it, it actually establishes it. Yeah. We just got done yeah. seeing here. Yeah. Flesh will not think on this wise. Mm -hmm. It can't. Yeah. This is the confusion the world has. This is the confusion the man had that came to Brother Levain. Mm -hmm. But faith will have us to see things like God sees them. Mm -hmm. yeah. To live in a way to please God just like Abraham. Yeah. Amen. It will cause us to move closer to God and his ways. Yeah. Not further away. Unbelief moves us further away. Mm. It blinds us. It brings us to a point where we, we, we're, we're like the world grappling. You just can't get a hold of this. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I can't. The, where does the understanding come? It comes from unbelief. Yes. It draws us closer having the law written on our hearts. We rejoice. We don't have to, we don't have to argue and dispute these things. We love the things of God. Mm -hmm. We love and embrace God's ways. Our desire is consumed with pleasing God, not men, but pleasing God. What is his way? We want to know his ways. What shall we say then, brethren? If you're able to think about something and make it yours, you can talk about it. So, so the Spirit says, what shall we say? Do you got a hold of this? Yeah. Are you believing it? Because if you are, you can say it. Christians are accused of not being a thinking people. This is not so in Christ. In Christ, the Spirit calls all followers to think and to speak about what God has shown them. Yeah. It's because it's not about you. It's about God. Mm -hmm. See, we're not, moved, we're not moved, brethren, we're not moved by our own intelligence here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Men's intelligence can only go so far. Yeah. We're moved by, because we believe God is, he's, he's opening up truth to us. So they say, so you, you think you're so smart? No, we know who, so we know who we believe. This is, this is the way it is in God. God is the creator of all. He gave us our minds to be used for him. So doesn't it make sense if someone's not using their mind for God? Mm. Now, they may be wise in the world, and the men may lift them up and, and hold them up high and say, look at what you have done. You've, you've, already, you've taken what God has already invented, and you kind of figured a part of it out. Mm. whoop de do. Mm -hmm. Good for you. <laughs> but see, these things is bigger than that. Amen. We may not be a Deep thinkers in of ourselves. But see, God is. And he can open up the mind. And he can pour truth into the mind. Yes. Yes. We embrace the truth. The things of God. He is our creator. And he can open up our mind to the things that only he can show us. Why men scratch their heads and wonder how, how was... How did we get here? We can say, we'll tell you because we already know. He's shown us. He's, he, the, our creator has shown us, and we believe it. See, this is not just for a few elite thinkers. See, in the world, we, they, we have these few elite thinkers that they hold up really high. This understanding is for all who believe all who believe in Jesus, all who believe in God and what he's doing in his son, Jesus Christ, all who follow and believe God. How is the truth impacting the way you think? Well, I, I know we can go around the room and we can have brothers share how truth has been opened up to them. Truth that they never saw before, but now it just seems fundamental. Amen. Was it because of your great thinking that you came to these fundamental things truth does not work in a way that men in the flesh can understand it on their own 
But as we, as we get a hold of these things, we want more of truth and less of the garbage of the world. Amen. You've heard the saying, garbage in, garbage out. Well, see, we're not, we're not, no longer are we happy with the garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not enough for us. We're not satisfied. It's just as Abraham was not satisfied with the world. He, he believed and followed God because he wasn't satisfied. That's why, brother. He wasn't satisfied. So we don't expect anything else from the world. Garbage in, garbage out. Guys, we ponder the truth of what God has done and is doing. It will produce fruit. When someone's not producing fruit, we don't have to ask why. It's unbelief. Because belief, believing, produces fruit. It will, it does. So we ask, why did God choose Abraham? What was so special about Abraham? What great things did he do that set him apart? What did he do to get such attention? Men are lifted up and chosen by other men because of something he did. Something that, you know, it may not be, when you compare it to the things that God has done, it may not be, but compared to other men, they might, be, they might just be a little bit ahead of the other men. So they, oh, you are great. Yeah. No one runs as fast as you. Mm-hmm. No one sings as beautiful as you. Well, have you heard an angel sing? I don't know. But anyway, if our works is our boast and not God, what did Abraham do? Men may not say, They boast in themselves, but it doesn't take long for you to be around them to see that they boast in themselves. It was his faith in God that was the game changer, not his works. Our faith in God will make us who we are before God. Abraham believed God. But after, but after thinking, Excuse me. Faith in God, not in men or works, will produce fruit like no man can produce by themselves mm-hmm. or through works of their own. Yeah. You've heard of burnout or fall, because people falling away that once had it and then they fell away. What is it? Well, Somewhere along the line, they were, they were relying on their own works. Yeah. And they weren't seeing God clearly. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, Hebrews eleven six. It's not that it's hard, brethren, to accomplish great things in the world to be seen before men can be very hard, but it's not impossible. Yeah. That's why we have a book today called... Guinness Book of World Records. They take men's great things that they have done and they hold them up and say, look what he have done. I don't remember Samson being in there. They don't have these kind of men in there. But they hold these things up really high and say, look what, look what they have done. But these are hard things, but not impossible. But if it's your aim... To please God, and I know as believers in Christ Jesus, it really is our aim. We want to please God. You must have faith in God. You must believe God. I have known people, even, I, I believe very wise people, who, after talking to them, the things that I thought were fundamental, they couldn't grab a hold of the things I was talking about. And boy, it just gets them frustrated. And I'm not frustrated at all. And, I, and I'm not I don't prideful or, or puffed up when I'm speaking to them. I realize talking to them, I listen to them, that is because they have no faith. It's not because they're stupid or unwise. I'm talking about people that I do respect for their wisdom. I've, I've talked to them before, but it's because of their faith that they can't grab a hold of something our children here see as fundamental. This is why things that have to do with God and eternal life that we see as fundamental 
they have a hard time with because it's unbelief. They can't see it. I, I use an example for you. Pilate, he, was a, he wasn't given the position that he was given because he was a stupid man or unwise or simple. But John 18, 38 says, Pilate said unto him, what is truth? He had truth standing right before him. Why did, why did men of that day follow Christ and was able to grab a hold of a fisherman? Were able to see this, but Pilate was not able to see it. It was unbelief. We are those that possess faith and are blessed by God to see truth of God and understand it because we believe. It is from a higher, this is, this is a higher form there, uh, this belief of seeing things from a higher mirror, but it's because of belief. It sounds simple, but it's not at all really simple. God has to do, this is the work that God has done in you. If you have understanding and believe God, know that this is not ordinary. It's extraordinary that God has given this to you. Amen. It's something you can rejoice in and take a hold of and go with. Yeah. We as believers in Jesus Christ are extra blessed by God mm -hmm. to see what he is doing. Now you may just, some of you young children, you may just think, well... These are simple things, but there's nothing simple about you believing in it. Yeah. There's nothing simple about you seeing it, Sister Sarah. There's nothing simple about you getting a hold of it, uh -huh. Sister Emma. This is not simple at all. This is a work of God. Amen. So when people say, <clears throat> do you think you're special? We can say no, but we know who is. And we believe in him. This truly brings joy that the world cannot understand. That God has chosen us, just as our father Abraham. He has chosen us to be his people. And we believe on him and he pours out truth. That he might be the father of all those who believe. Though they were uncircumcised, the righteousness might be imputed to them also, Romans 4.11. By faith in Jesus Christ, we are all one family. Not relying on ourselves, but we rely on God. That's what sets us apart from the rest of the world. Amen. The children of Abraham, we as Abraham believe God. Jew or Gentile, we trust God. If you believe, it's because the work of God in you. This is not ordinary. Yeah. This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he sent. John 6, 29. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Now the fruit of this comes in us and continues. But it is the work of God, not of men. We don't work to obtain. Mm -hmm. We believe and obtain, so therefore we work. Amen. By faith, we are free to work for God mm -hmm. and to follow and obey Him and to be like Him, seeing that we are not justified by our work, but of God. And what He did in Christ, we continue to run and are strengthened by this truth. Truth strengthens you. Believe, believing in God gives you strength to endure. Unbelief makes you weak. Seeing that we are not justified by our work, but of God we, we do not lose heart. Just as Abraham did not. We are joined with our father Abraham in that it was not his works that set him apart before God, but that he believed God. He was special. Because he believed in God. Amen. We also, as a people, have nothing to boast about before God. We are special people because we believe in God. 
We are set apart from other men because of our belief in God. Our advantage is in believing in God. We did not find God. He found us. And we believed in him. And at the same time, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that's worth finding. It was already there. We're finding what, what we need and God supplying what we need. Something that God has, he's already completed this. Revelation 5, 9 talks about Jesus was worthy. He redeemed us to God by his blood. Do we believe this? This truth, that's the question. God's already done the work. Do we believe God? Justification is totally complete already. The kingdom of God is like a pearl of great price. What do you want? What do you What are you willing to give it up? Give up for it? Are you with? It's going to take everything. Yeah, amen. The pearl was already. It was already there, and found. But when he had found it, he sold everything. The man sold everything, and bought it. Because the man, he he saw it, he believed it, and he sold everything. This is like the kingdom of God. We see it, we grab a hold of it, we want it, and we, there's nothing that we would hold on to. Yes, that's right. Amen. Faith moves men to obey God and follows after him, loving all his ways, not to question God, but to believe in God. Faith will move us to do more for God, not less, because we see him. This is where unbelievers are confused. And they are blinded. We are not working our way to heaven. Mm-hmm. We're believing God yeah. and working for our God in whom we believe. Yeah. Yeah. We desire to have what God has to offer us. Justification is already in place and we want it. Yeah. Amen. We are working because we believe God, not working to obtain. Mm-hmm. Abraham was righteous because he believed God. He did great works for the Lord because he believed. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Romans 4, 3. Unbelief says no one is perfect. We say, don't tell me about what's not perfect. Tell me how to become perfect. We know. We need a savior. We know who we are. We know we are unrighteous. And we know that unrighteousness will be destroyed. So we desire to understand what saith the scripture. Don't tell me what you believe. What saith the scripture? Abraham, a man like us being reckoned righteous sounds real good to us. Don't tell us what we... The, how we are unrighteous all sensitive and honest hearts know this already yeah, yeah. tell us about what saith the scripture in regard to a righteousness that is given yeah. mm-hmm. by God to a people see this is a sweet sound to a tender heart a heart for God mm-hmm. tell us about this righteousness that is of God that God gives to all who believe The only righteousness that is accepted by God, and we'll sell all to get it. Mm-hmm. See, this is not pretend. The, the world pretends. The world pretends, and they live in a, a constant make believe bubble that they have conceived of themselves. But we're talking about a reality here that's going to continue on for eternity to be with our God. The world lives in a state of make-believe, not thinking about God's wrath, but the wrath of God will come, and it is coming to all those who do not believe. But we do not, we are not like them. We trust God. We trust Him 
who says who he is, what he is, and what he's doing. And we believe that what he is doing is real. Mm -hmm. It is not make-believe like the world pretends. Amen. But it is not enough to believe that God exists. We believe in God and in whom he sent. John 6, 28 says, Believe on him whom he hath sent. Mm -hmm. That's what sets us apart. We're believing on mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. He has not and will not fail you. God will not fail us. Mm -hmm. As we believe on him, we can rejoice. <laughs> Believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. No, we do not put our trust in works, but we trust and believe in him who justifieth. Yeah. Who his, his righteousness is put on us that makes us clean before him and acceptable. We are, we are accepted in the Son. Amen. So we can rejoice, brethren. Amen. He is a good and perfect God. Mm. He will not fail us. Let not your hearts fail, fail you for fear, but rejoice and give thanks because wrath is coming, but in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. we are accepted. Rejoice and be glad Amen. that we are going to be with our God. Thank you, brother.